We're kicking off Earth Month with the Disney Plus original series Secrets of the Whales from National Geographic. Then we have Dave Goals from The Muppet Show and so much more. I'm Jenny. And I'm Andre. This is What's Up Disney Plus, where we talk all things Disney Plus. Secrets of the Whales, the Disney Plus original series from National Geographic, chronicles the whale way of life and their challenges and triumphs in an ever-changing ocean. Joining us today is National Geographic explorer and photographer, Brian Scary. Brought to you by GEICO. For bundling made easy, go to GEICO.com. Welcome to the show, Brian. We're excited to have you. Oh, it's my pleasure, Jenny. Thank you. It's a pleasure. You're one of the world's top ocean photographers. You have spent 10,000 hours underwater documenting uncharted territory and bringing awareness on environmental issues. Tell us about your work and how you got into it. As a little boy growing up in Massachusetts, my parents would take me to the beaches. We didn't live near the ocean, but I wanted to get out and explore. There was something very mysterious about that dark ocean surface that I wanted to dip beneath. So when I was old enough to begin scuba diving about age 15, and I remember for the first time putting on a, a tank and regulator and sitting in the shallow end and breathing underwater. And it was just a game changer for me, but it was maybe a year or two after that, that I attended a diving conference in Boston. And I remember sitting in the audience and watching photographers and filmmakers present their work. And I often describe it as an epiphany. You know, I, I knew I wanted to be an ocean explorer, but now I knew how I wanted to do it with a camera. It was a long sort of evolution to figure out how to get to do it. But dreams do come true. And for decades now, I've gotten to swim with sharks and whales and sea turtles and, and tell their stories. That's awesome. I don't know about the swimming with sharks. I, I respect you for that one. <laughs> They're not so bad. That's really cool. What does a typical day look like for you? A, a normal day might be an 18 hour day in the field where I'm getting up at five or six in the morning, then go out to the boat, try to spend as many hours underwater as I can. You know, natural history moments don't reveal themselves usually very quickly. So I'm often limited by how much time I can spend underwater. I can either have a scuba tank, so I might spend an hour underwater on a given dive, or with the whales, I'm only underwater as long as I can hold my breath. I'm free diving. I get in the water, I have to get close, and I have to make those pictures. So it's really on the animal's terms, and they have to allow me into their world. Now, I know this is going to be difficult to answer, but what do you love most about your work? You know, it's evolved throughout the, the course of my career in the sense that I began to see a greater purpose, perhaps, you know, that there were a lot of problems occurring in the world's oceans. And if I could shine a light on those and tell stories, not only about the problems, but the solutions as well, that maybe we could move the, the needle in favor of conservation, we could restore the planet. It. It's what it's about. It's about the animals. It's about conservation. It's about educating people on these creatures. And, you know, with Secrets of the Whales, it's just a great way for us to come along on this journey and learn about this. It, it is the most ambitious and most exciting project of my career because it was sort of this confluence of working with charismatic animals using cutting edge science to reveal human like traits. To me, understanding that whales have ancestral traditions, that they have cultures, that they celebrate identity and, and personality, and realize that, that we share this planet with other species that are not below us, but similar to us in many ways, that maybe we would change our perception. Disney had it right all along, you know, that animals talk, mm -hmm. they, they sing, mm -hmm. they, they do things <laughs> just like us. So um, yeah, I think, it's, I think it's fabulous. This project looks like such an undertaking. What was the production like? So we worked in 24 locations and we're trying to tell a story. So it is complex, but we were very lucky in every location, you know, there were these extraordinary moments. In New Zealand, we were hoping to get orca feeding on stingrays. This one day I was able to get in the water and here was this family of orcas feeding in a shallow water harbor I and mean, this adult female is coming towards me and she's got a stingray hanging out of her mouth then she drops it she drops the the stingray and it just drifts down to the bottom so I followed it down and then out of the corner of my right eye, I see this giant black and white whale moving in and it almost doesn't seem real. It's, it's enormous. There's her, there's the ray and there's me. And she's looking at me and looking at the ray and looking at me and looking at the ray. 
as if to say, <laughs> as if to say, you know, are you going to eat that? So when I didn't eat the rice, she very gently bends over and picks it up delicately in her mouth and she picks it up and I was able to get a still frame while the cameraman was getting the motion and then she turns gently and another member of her family came in and they were food sharing, they were eating together. You couldn't imagine that in your wildest imagination. You just hope to see an orca. You hope to see them doing the behavior that you came to see, which is is not always going to be predictable. And then to have a moment like that was was off the scale. You've spent your career documenting oceanic wildlife. What impact do you hope that has on audiences? 98% of the biosphere, 98% of the livable, habitable planet where life can exist on Earth is ocean. And even though we are terrestrial creatures and we see our world from that terrestrial centric viewpoint, we very much live on a water planet. Every other breath that a human being takes comes from the ocean. Most of the oxygen we breathe is generated by the sea. So it's in our best interest then to explore this watery world and to protect it. So the more we know about animals like whales and their lives and their personalities and their cultures, then I think the better chance we have of, of having the same kind of empathy that they have for each other. So that's my sort of broad hope. You know, I, I think if if we can see this planet uh, for the magnificent thing that it is and, and understand that we're not alone on this planet and, and we share it with other creatures um, that, that have complex lives, then that would be a great thing. That was beautifully stated, Brian. We cannot thank you enough for being uh, here and you. sharing all of these wonderful gems with us. And I know that so many people are gonna take away a lot from the series. Well, thank you very much, Jenny, I appreciate it. It's been a great pleasure. Andre, thanks for the great questions, Jenny, and um, yeah, to, to be continued. The Disney Plus original series, Secrets of the Whales from National Geographic is streaming this Earth Day, April 22nd on Disney Plus. Also, while you're there, make sure to check out the Earth Day collection. Now it's time for What's New. Explore the details behind Pixar Animation Studios in new episodes of Inside Pixar, an original series now streaming on Disney+. Plus. Hunter, check. Echo, check. Tech, check. Wrecker, check. Crosshair, check. Star Wars The Bad Batch, an original series, arrives May the 4th on Disney+. Plus. Check out the new trailer and key art now. The Great Gonzo, Dr. Bunsen Honeydew, Waldorf, and Zoot are just a few of the Muppet characters performed by the great Dave Goals. And I am excited that we have him here today on What's Up Disney Plus. Welcome to the show, Dave. It's so great to have you here. Nice to see you, Andre. You've played so many iconic characters from the Muppet Show all the way to today with Muppets Now. So what is the process like to create the voice of those characters? Usually there's a puppet first, not always, but usually. And so if there is, the puppet kind of tells you who it is. You know, a good puppet is designed with a character that's evident. So you simply try to match a voice and a behavior and a thought process with what the puppet is. In the case of Bunsen Honeydew, I was building him. I built Bunsen and in the workshop and Jerry Nelson came in and looked at him and put him on. And he sort of talked in this little pinched voice like this. And I remember at the time thinking that was pretty good. And when Jim asked me to perform him, I just use that kind of a voice. There's something really deeply psychological about it, you know, that these people are little, they're little machines that represent parts of us, you know? And what we try to do is make it believable so that not only you, but we can buy into it. How does it feel to have The Muppet Show on Disney Plus where it can be revisited or discovered by a new generation of fans? I'm really thrilled about that. I think mostly for myself because I don't have to get out DVDs or VHSs and it's gonna look good, it's gonna look very pretty, it's been all remastered. And I know that when I start watching them, I'll remember specifics about the day they were recorded and they are also timeless. You know, they, they, they're timeless and not timeless because some of the audience won't know these people who are guests, but they'll be exposed to their talents. You know, and I think that's a lovely thing. Now I've heard there's been some Muppet pranks that were pulled on the show, is that true? Many, many, many pranks. And this was a part of the Muppet culture way before I joined and I continued it. Don Celine was this incredible original Muppet maker who would literally tie, take a bolt and he would, he would wrap some fake fur around it and put a little piece of yarn on it. And then he would connect rubber band rubber. Like he bought rolls of a thousand feet of rubber band rubber. And he would stretch it around all the table legs in the shop. And then with a T-pin, he'd stick it down 
30 feet away from his desk. And so when he was ready, he could just pull that string and the mouse would start running through the room. And he used to plan it for when our Greek bookkeeper, Hellas Gogos, came to, down to the shop to visit us. And he'd wait till she got to just the right place and he would pull the string and she would lift literally come a foot off the floor as the mouse went under <laughs> it's something that you've reminded me i need to i need to reinstigate that i need to have more pranks now we're doing some but we're not at the level we used to be so i'm curious did you ever have to be in a physically uncomfortable position while performing on the series almost every moment come on andre <laughs> Jeez. it's not a, what, right? it's not a it is, it is almost never a comfortable job. You're either standing like this with your head out of the frame or you're in something worse. We were shooting The Great Muppet Caper at night in a location. It was a mansion out in the country in England and it started to rain. It's about two in the morning and we were all, like 10 of us were arranged on this large dolly. We were literally woven together like a cherry pie topping. It, rather than have us, we didn't know how long it was gonna rain. So rather than get all separated and going to our trailers, they just threw a tarp over us. It's just crazy what happens. Well, thank you so much, Dave, for being here. It was an honor to talk to you and get so much Muppet history. Great to chat with you, Andre. The Muppet Show is now streaming on Disney+. Plus. We dove in the secrets of the whales, a Disney Plus original series from National Geographic, and we talked to the Dave Goals from The Muppet Show. That's our show for today. Be sure to head on over to Disney Plus to stream all of your favorites and more. We'll see you next. Jenny? Technology these days. All right, we'll see you next time, folks. April Fool's. I knew it! <laughs> Get me every time, Jenny. Yes, you've guessed it already. The electric sledgehammer. <laughs>